Hello everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to my solo trip to Cuba. This is a part one video. Um, it's going to give you a little bit of insight of what I did while I was in Havana, Cuba. I typically do not travel alone. However, this is a new decade. This is a new year. I have pushed my envelope and I decided to take a solo trip to Cuba of all places. And I wasn't nervous at all. Um, I didn't really, I did a bit of research um, just because coming from America, you hear like a lot of awful things or propaganda about traveling to Cuba, how hard it is. And that was the complete opposite of my experience. Hence why I had to record it because I just could not believe I had such a seamless time in Cuba. Mind you, it did not come without complete hiccups, but I just couldn't believe how easy it is to actually travel to Cuba, how accessible it is. And I just couldn't believe how well received and welcome I was from the Cuban people. So this is actually a clip of me landing in Cuba and i was just so excited because there's so much sun and i was coming from cold new york it was like 18 degrees when i left so drones are actually not allowed in cuba so this is as aerial as it's going to get love so just enjoy the green pastures as i'm landing i went straight from the airport to where i was staying at Air on my airbnb i decided to stay in old havana just because it is it's in between a lot of um, places and I didn't want to have to taxi everywhere I was going. I definitely wanted to walk and get to see a lot of Cuba that I would miss if I was in a car the entire time. Um, so the first day I got in, I went to this restaurant. I think it's called The Amigos. The food was bomb. And then I walked around to see what's going on in the community. I found out there was going to be a concert later on that night. So I went home, you know, I got freshened up. I took a quick nap and I was ready to party at 915. And so was everyone else. The streets were full. <laughs> Like I said, the streets were packed, full of people dancing, singing, eating, just enjoying the. <laughs> Yeah. 
This is what I mean. This is what life is made of. Having these wonderful unplanned experiences with a magnitude of people who vibrate on the same frequency as you at the same time as you. It is just a wonderful experience. Day two in Havana, I did a free walking tour. It typically starts around nine o'clock in the morning. And like the title says, it's completely free. So make sure you do it and tip their guide after. They enrich you with so much history, so much art. And it's just a phenomenal experience to, especially if you travel alone, to meet up with people from all different countries and to have great conversation. I know in America we are encouraged um, to believe that Cuba is just such a poor country, but the art that I like ran into that was unplanned, like it just shows me in my opinion how luxury luxurious it is to be Cuban and to understand what that means. To me, it's like they don't need everything that's ever invented to find like peace and luxury and healing and all these great qualities that we have here in America, they make do with what they have. And when you see it, you're, you're like, your breath is literally taken away because how could you build such an amazing building or such an amazing piece of art with little materials you have? To me, that is the true definition of luxury. So if you are in, in the arts at all, like Cuba has to be your next stop because no joke, the colors, the vibrancy is absolutely amazing. <laughs>
day three, I started off my journey in a taxi colectivo. This is the best way to get around the city um, of Havana or if you want to go between other cities such as Vinales or Trinidad, I would highly recommend um, seeing how much it would be to travel via a taxi colectivo because um, the other alternatives can be more expensive. I was actually just taking this to the Via Azul bus to see how much the bus tickets were to get to um, Trinidad the next day. This guy, he only charged me charged me five cook to get from my Airbnb to Via Azul, which I thought was a fair price. Um, he actually didn't stop to get any other people, so I was okay with paying five cook. But definitely, um, definitely explore taxi colectivos because they are extremely cheap. You can get places for one cook, literally. I wish I would have known about this before I paid for a taxi from the airport but all is well. And also these are old school cars. Okay guys, so I've just bought my ticket to Trinidad and I just happened up on Revolution Square. Literally, I have been stopped like four times. Everyone thinks that I'm Cuban and they have these whole long conversations with me in Spanish. And like, my Spanish is okay, but it's not Cuban great. Last night, literally everyone stopped me to talk to me. And I'm like, uh, your girl is from America. And when you see her this Spanish, you're gonna put me in Spanish class because your girl is just, I know little okay so after that i went on a mission to find a forest that i heard was in the city of havana like in the middle of the city i ended up being lost and going to a children's park i have no idea how i ended up there but i had walked for an hour obviously to the wrong place so i had to end up retracing my steps back to revolution square where a guide helped me and pointed me in the right direction to the um parque nacional um, I believe that's what it's called and I ended up walking there from Revolution Square. It only is a 45 minute walk However, because I went to the wrong location. I had been walking for almost three hours I couldn't be more excited to see a classic car because you know where there's a classic car There's a tourist monument. So I was super excited because that means I am not too far from the place I have been looking for so I have trekked to almost two hours to this beautiful forest and it is absolutely beautiful literally my skin is shining like this is beautiful look at that okay swim in because uh -uh, no telling honey ain't no telling what's up in there but I did see other people swimming in there I just won't be doing that Everyone has to come to the forest that's in the center of Havana. It's called Busque de la Havana. So pretty. I'm gonna go sit down for a while and recoup because I wore the wrong shoes today and I need to rest before I decide what my next move is going to be. Stayed at the forest for about another hour and then I just explored the neighborhoods and you know just soaked up some of the whatever was going on. Yeah. I'm glad that I opened myself up completely to this Cuba trip because I was able to meet a lot of people. Um, I didn't stick to the tourist guides that's like posted everywhere on Google. Um, I just really followed my own path and I met this guy 
who gave me a tour of Cuba on his motorcycle. And the craziest thing is he looks just like my little brother. And later on in our conversation, he was telling me that he has a sister that looks identical to me, which was so amazing just to hear. I have a doppelganger out there. I actually did not get to meet her, but I'll take his word for it because he legit looks like my little brother. And what you hear about the Cuban people being so kind, so nice, always having a smile is true. Like, I was so surprised at how many people were bending over backwards just to help me figure out where I was going, um, to like redirect me, to compliment me or to just give me to give me um, recommendations of what I should do while I was there. This was not the only person who took the time out of their day to show me something special that Cuba had to offer, or I should be more specific, what Havana had to offer. He was actually taking me to this really famous, um, I believe it's a hostel in Havana. It's called Mango Tree. And I went there because I was actually on my way to Trinidad and I didn't know where to stay. I didn't know, um, I couldn't really Google it where I was going. I couldn't book through Airbnb, obviously due to the Wi-Fi situation. I didn't come here with a plan. I was able to experience so much more of the culture, the language. Um, And I was able to meet some wonderful people and just the experience as a whole has been so enriching. And I'm like really, really excited to see what the next leg of my trip holds. I did book a taxi um, not a taxi, a Via Sul, um, autobus to Trinidad. That drive is like an eight hour, eight hour drive. Um, I'm quite used to long drives. I actually love driving when I'm driving. So this is going to be a different experience. I think this is going to be my first like bus, me getting on a bus somewhere. Um, yeah, the only reference in America we have to that is like a Greyhound. So I'm hoping that this isn't a Greyhound um, ex- type of experience, but I don't know. I'm going to be open to it all. Even if it is, I'm going to be happy and grateful. Um, but yeah, so I am going to take you guys along that experience um, and let you guys know. The first three days in Havana taught me that I can actually travel alone. Like I am a big girl. I will be fine. I will still thrive. I will still have an enjoyable time. I am so grateful that I got to learn this lesson and I am so grateful for every single one of you guys who has watched my video. Again, this is part one, so stay tuned for part two. Please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you plan to travel to Cuba, what you've heard about Cuba, if you have any questions about your trip to Cuba. I strongly encourage every single person listening to this video this is your sign honey this is your sign man like i am giving you your sign get out of your comfort zone travel to whatever place it is that you have in your mind do whatever crazy workout you know that you've dreamed of go to that place talk to that person this is your sign i believe in you and thank you guys again so much for riding this ride with me